Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I'm here talking to the man, the legend, Joe Run. Um, he runs a load of Bar Citizen-based organization coordination and sort of started really enlarged the what is seen as the Bar Citizen community and and the sort of the modern Bar Citizen, at least from my eyes. Johan, give me give me a little bit of background about yourself and and sort of how you set up Bar Citizens, what you sort of did, and how do you see yourself? Yeah, so. I kind of came into the community in late 2015, 2016 as a, a kind of a newer backer and didn't really have any experience with uh, with other online communities or, or uh, the Star Citizen community. And I think it was around the summer of 2016, Greyheaded Gamer reached out to me since I, I was in his Discord from his Not So Sober Saturday program. Yeah, yeah. It was my my first experience with any kind of online game community at, outside of Second Life. And really was having a great time getting to know other people in the, in the community and my first time on Discord. So he set up a Discord for Florida and uh, at he was talking with Twerk17, who is in, in Florida, also lives in Florida who had just gotten back from Gamescom. Now Salty Mike. Yep, exactly. I just call him Mike. I refuse to use the whole salty thing. <laughs> no worries. I, yeah, yeah. I, I do not endorse saltiness. <laughs> so he set up a, a Discord for Florida, and I went to kind of research Bar Citizen. I, I didn't even really know what it was. So it was like, come up with a, a meetup. And so I got on the old forums, and this was before Spectrum, and realized that Various people over the years had tried to set up meetups, but the forums were a terrible, terrible way to coordinate people because people didn't go there very often. And so somebody would post like, hey, let's have a meetup in like next month. And then several months later, someone would say, it's like, oh, yeah, I missed that, but let's have a meetup next month. And it's like months would go by and then they like a year and a half later, they have a small meetup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Bar Citizen really originated in Austin in 2013, and that's been one of the longest running local groups there around the, the original studio. But in other parts of the world, they were very, very infrequent and people didn't know how to con connect with other communities. And a few people went to the, the forum meetup section. Most people had no idea it existed. So when we had that, uh, the Discord, I, I went on and went through like 22 pages of posts over however many years it was, collected like 130 names, pinged everybody in one post, like, hey, jump in the Discord. And we're planning at Bar Citizen like three months down the road uh, in Orlando for a statewide. And uh, we, we've got Greyhead Gamer involved. We've got Twerk17 involved. Uh, DJ Knight was living in Florida at the time. Uh, DJ Knight and Twerk17 both had just were coming back from, uh, from Gamescom Germany that year. So a lot of hype around them. Sophie Girl, who was active in the community back then streaming, uh, a couple of other uh, relatively well-known streamers at the, at the time who I, I don't think are really involved in the community, were all in our in our Florida group. So I think initially we had like 30, 40 people and it kept growing. And I had a, had a, a good indoor-outdoor venue planning for about 30 to 40 people. And as we were getting closer, uh, Sophie Girl was volunteering at CitizenCon, so she was connected with CIG. And had Tyler get in touch with me about the event planning. And so he'd reach out to me like the day before around the verse and say, it's like, hey, Jordan, do you have a logo or something? And I remember one day I, I it was like just after five, I left the office and I locked the door. I was in my car and, and he was messaging me on Discord and like, uh, yeah, hang on. Let me I open up my laptop here in the car and get on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I sent him a logo. And the next day he, he would start uh, started promoting it on around the verse. Like three, three or four times he, he talked about it and we ended up having over 80 people show up to our bar citizen. It was in September 17th, 2016. And we started at two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Tyler flew out from Austin, got there about four and it was just a, a life changing event for me to connect with so many other, not just star citizens, but what so many of us in the Star Citizen community have in common are that we're all space nerds. We love Star Wars, Star Trek, The Expanse, Firefly, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and all of sci-fi and fantasy genres that are kind of closely interrelated. We all have this this common background and 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 loves, and it's such a, a passionate community 
when you meet other people in the real world, you know, over a drink or, or a meal and you're talking to Star Citizen, it's just, it's magical. I, I can't even describe how incredible this connection is. It's like all long lost friends that you've never had before that you just, that you're meeting for the first time in, in so long. Well, it's just nice everyone being of um, on the same page. People are there to socialize and there is a collective experience there from Star Citizen, from wanting to to play games, from wanting to play Star Citizen, from wanting to be a good game. And it, because you're there all on the same page, I think it's just really nice social experience. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's that one kind of narrow niche thing that we all have in common. Like it, you show up to one of these and you don't know anybody and it's like, hey, how, how long have you been a, been a backer? And that's the first thing that'll just get somebody going. Or oh, what what spaceships do you like? And people won't shut up after that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been to um, quite a few bar citizens now, either up around Manchester or in the south of England. Um, sort of no, nowhere in middle England, just either at the top of England or at the bottom. Um, and yeah, it's, it's always been absolutely fantastic. People are incredibly friendly. Um, it's it, people are very talkative. Uh, you obviously, you get shy people sometimes, but uh, they normally will be um, out of their shell or um, are able to interact to a level they want to interact with, um, sort of freely, which is which is quite nice because obviously not everyone is incredibly social. Yeah, it's just it's just a lovely experience. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point because so many people in our community tend to be kind of socially awkward or have a lot of social anxiety, and and there's people that. And I've heard stories that like move me to tears from some of the bar citizen organizers over the years that they'd have people that drove three or four hours and never left their house. And this is before COVID, uh, all in the, in the before times when we were having a lot of our citizens and some of these people, I mean, they're just complete shut-ins. They have no social interaction and they would travel for hours to get to one of these and they'd be able to make these connections. And it's something where everyone can bond. And you know, a lot of us may feel like we're a little weird or like super nerdy, or we don't connect with normal people, air quotes, uh, out there in our day-to-day -day lives. But in this community, we're all the same kind of weird. And so we're normal amongst each other. <laughs> yeah, okay. You expect a level of weirdness. So everyone's okay. <laughs> exactly. We're all the same crazy nutball spaceship obsessed nerds <laughs> go on and on in depth I, some of the stories i've heard at some of the bar citizens i've been to where like people are so deep into star wars lore and like a couple of people that have that in common and they'll just go into depths that i never imagined existed <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I, I love talking to people at bar citizens, citizen cons, that sort of stuff, because it's just such a range of people. I mean, a lot, it's a lot of IT professionals, to be sure. But as you said, there's a lot of nerds and a lot of people that love sci-fi. And yeah, it's 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 a, I think what it is as well. So with Star Citizen and the Star Citizen community, this is the first large gaming community I've actively participated in. I am a, a social gamer, but I only typically socialize with my group of friends that I play a game with or my guild. Star Citizen is the first community where I've gone, I will actively participate in every little aspect of different people's communities or within Star Citizen, go out and try and seek more people to talk to. And obviously the YouTube channel has helped with that, but it's a, a newish experience for me as well. I say newish, I've been doing it for eight years now. Oh no, I'm done with my life. A little while. I, a little while. <laughs> but so yeah, so th th with with the bar citizens, it's it's really interesting for me the sort of the, you you started the the website, you you got a bit of traction, people um sort of um coming to you, talking to you, um ha you helping them from what I from what I'm aware, helping you um you helping them organize um some of these bar citizens and um listing them on the website and then we sort of and um, they get very popular and we sort of have very regular bar citizens all around the world, which is fantastic. But then COVID happens and most of those bar citizens can't then go ahead for about a year and a half. Is that, is that? It's been two years. Been two years. So obviously we're moving into a, a new era for bar citizens now where they can start again and CIG seem to be actively wanting to support them. Um, not that they weren't before, but now they seem to be actually actively trying to send staff members even more regularly to these sort of bar citizens around the the, the, the world. And we just recently had that 
big Bar Citizen event on First Contact Day. Um, the, was the Bar Citizen World Tour? Is that what they called it in the end? So they're going to start the Bar Citizen World Tour. That that was kind of the beginning kickoff of it at, mm-hmm. uh, at First Contact Day. So they had events at Manchester. They had 150 people. Uh, Frankfurt, they had 250 people. Montreal at uh, the Turbulent Studio. The bar there, they had over 100 people. In Austin, they had over 100 people. L.A., they had over 100 people. So it, with eight days' notice was all the community got. They still had a massive, massive turnout and overflowed the venues that, that they had. And um, the, um, the 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 two-year hiatus was really difficult for a lot of the community in bar citizens because there, people that had, that had been meeting up for years weren't, weren't able to. But luckily, we already had a lot of bar citizen discords. So... After the the Florida Bar Citizen event, I, a friend of mine suggested that I start an international Bar Citizen Discord and help other people set these up. So that's when I, I set up a, a specific Discord just for international Bar Citizen coordinators and reached out to a lot of people that had been doing it. And a lot of other people were very excited about doing it. And with CIG kind of talking up the event that, that we had there in Florida, it really got a lot of uh, a lot of traction. And I had a team of people uh, working with the guys at the base radio, and they put together the barcitizen.sc website. And so we have an interactive map there where people can post their bar citizens. But more importantly was that we started setting up bar citizen discords all around the world. So we've got over 60 different discords just for country and, and local region and city meetups. And these groups, starting in late 2016, 2017, uh, I've been helping people set up a, a Discord, set up their first bar citizens, kind of give them a primer on, okay, well, this is kind of how you do it. Saturday afternoon around two or three is a quiet time at restaurants. So it's after the lunch, before dinner. So they usually have plenty of extra space if you have six to 12 to 20 people show up. and um, it gives people time to get there in the morning uh, if they're traveling. Because a lot of people travel two, three hours to get to these. And in between the events is what's great because people get to know each other in their discords and they have a local community. So in between meetups, they're talking and talking about local events and talking about Star Citizen and make, making more friendships. I'm a firm, like just passionate, passionate believer in growing communities and people finding more more and more communities to join. Uh, I, I'm in like 130 discords and help set up a lot of other communities as well. And so I, I try to get around to all the different uh, regional bar citizen discords and kind of help them continue the momentum. Some, some of them are a little more active than others, uh, but a little regular activity helped to maintain through the, uh, the two years of, uh, of COVID. And then now, after the uh, all the, all the press that CIG put out on the uh, Inside Star Citizen, it's just exploded. I and I, I have people coming to the Bar Citizen Coordinators uh, Discord all day, every day, looking for their local groups, looking for Bar Citizens. Some people are looking to to, to set up their own Bar Citizens. Uh, I've had a couple of people set up new discords where we didn't have any before, like Pitts, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Haven't had one in years. Finally, had somebody come in. They just set up a new community, uh, several other other places as well. And so the, just the activity has exploded since last weekend. And uh, I, I don't know, we probably have more than 20 events listed on the website. And they're just nonstop people are setting up lo- local local bar citizens. But we're, we're also trying to set up, uh, I've been helping different, different regions to put together regional events where we're going to get 30, 40 plus people uh in florida we already have over 90 people registered for a bar citizen in uh, september new jersey philly area they have i think over 70 people registered for theirs uh just helped the pacific northwest set one up outside of seattle and tacoma for the portland vancouver uh, western washington area and they've got over 50 people already registered so CIG has said that they're going to go around and visit some of the bar citizens, and they need to have a threshold of having enough people at these events for them to be able to have a good impact on the local communities. So they're likely going to send uh, community uh, managers, not uh, not like actual game devs, 
but uh, I mean, it's still great to meet I mean, Tyler and Jake and some of these um, uh, some of the other community managers out there at these events. It gives really good uh, support to them. I know that if if they are close enough to the studios that CIG do encourage their devs to turn up to events as well. Absolutely. Austin, LA, Manchester, Frankfurt. We, we used to have regular bar citizens. Uh, well, Austin, even the past six months, they've already been mm-hmm. having them again. They usually have a couple show up. Uh, Manchester, we had an organizer there for a, a few years. And uh, I, that was actually when the Wilm- Wilmslow studio was active. And Friday night events, they'd have quite a few people show up. Cameron would show up pretty often. Turbulent guys show up to the Montreal events. So, yeah, and if you're local to one of the studios, it, it's um, very likely to see some some of those guys and gals. But it's just it's just great to hang out with other nerds. It just really is. That's a, something I actually wanted to say. So, bar citizens. It's not just bar citizens. It's sort of star citizen meetups that the barcitizen.se website and you sort of help organize as well. So it's not just events where there's alcohol. Is there's a lot of other stuff that that also encompasses. Absolutely not. And and that's something I, I always try to, to tell people. Bar Citizen is just kind of the catchy name that actually uh, Michael Mor- Moreland came up with back in 2013. He kind of started everything up. But 90% of the time or more, they're in restaurants. And it's there's food. It's it's not loud. Uh, and you don't have to drink. It's it's not about the alcohol. It's just it's about meeting up. I and mean, there's been backyard barbecue citizens. There's been bowling citizens. There's been they, groups that go to museums. So in any local group and any or anybody anywhere. And my goal is to have these groups in every metropolitan area around the world. Like every city should have their own local group and get together, even if it's two or three people it's still a great time to hang out with other star citizens and just go do anything. I, I've got a buddy of mine I met through bar citizen that he, he lives just around the corner from my office and we get together for lunch every couple of weeks, get together for a beer after work. And we, we volunteer together at citizen con, shared a hotel and it creates real good, real world friendships. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I must say that I do genuinely feel that star citizens community is one of the best, if not the best gaming community. Um, certainly the best I've ever been part of, but as I said, I've only been, a part of um, really the Star Citizen community on the sort of scale and size that it is. And I've sort of been on the outskirts of other gaming communities and sort of like uh, interacted with them. But like things with like, um, I, I don't get me wrong, I love I love Eve and the Eve community, but sometimes quite aggressively toxic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have that with s- some games. And I think the Star Citizen community has been so welcoming and friendly and is so friendly to newcomers that it's just sort of surreal. I think we're we're so passionate about the dream of what this project is going to be that we want as many we want to share this passion with as many other people as possible and just educate people like that don't know what it is and even the people that are coming in now and that was an interesting conversation that um, I had with uh, with Jared at the virtual bar citizen we've been having like every couple of months on uh, Saturday afternoons. Uh, a virtual bar citizen sponsored by soul citizens and the yacht club which is one of the communities i'm involved in uh were we we had i think 110 people uh, at the last one it was the saturday after the last saturday of invictus and tyler was there jared was there jake was there we had several devs uh, it, it was a really great event and jared was was talking about how they're really focusing on the the current and immediate future in everything that they're talking about in the content and not really talking about that far distant future stuff, which is what old backers are still mostly focused on. And, you know, it's like we're all here for the future dream in five to 10 years down the road, but there's such an incredible game to play and world to lose yourself in right now. And new backers, they see what we have now and less so that the future and like, it's so one of the things I like to try to tell people about is, have you seen the star map? Have you seen this thing? Like all these, the, the, the old concept art from eight years ago of what we're not going to see for another 10 or 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting thing as well, because Star Citizen put out so much news and they have, obviously they maintain a live environment for their game. So even though the game's not properly released, it's still out now to play in its alpha and because of that news, because of that development information, because it's playable, you can sort of build a community around that. 
and you constantly have new things to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that's that's a, a great point is that that there's always something new to talk about with what's going on in Star Citizen. It's, that's your 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 career has become that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, because there is so much to talk about and because there's so much to go over. And even when I've gone over most of the stuff that's currently happened, there's still tomorrow and, and a new load of new stuff come uh, sort of happens. And there's updates that you can do to all of the old information that I've done five years ago. It's it's just really interesting. You, it, It's so weird that you can have these giant fan fests like CitizenCon and all these regular bar citizens when the game's not a fully released game it's an alpha it's it's just insane i i don't think clan imperium were prepared just for the amount of fan sort of um need for those sort of events for those social meetups how are you hoping that sort of the community and the bar citizens evolve then beyond what we have now for the next couple of years or, or even beyond that well that's what's really exciting right now is to see this 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 pent-up growth or this pent-up uh kind of reinvigoration of bar citizen with cig kicking it off last weekend after everybody's been under lockdown for two years for meetups but also we've had a half a million new backers come in in the past two plus years mm -hmm. and that's a tremendous amount of really passionate new blood that have come in, into the community and have never heard of bar citizen because we haven't had any since before they they ever joined so we're already seeing a tremendous number of bar citizens being set up. And as CIG formally announces where they're going on their world tour here soon, in the before times, they would have a section of the weekly newsletter that listed all the upcoming bar citizens for the next two weeks. So th they're going to bring that back. So every week you're going to see this in, in the newsletter, all the upcoming bar citizens, and they're going to be talking up the world tour. They'll have photos and and talks about and when they actually go out to these things and, and, uh, I, I think that's going to really add a lot of energy and awareness, which is why I'm trying to get around to a lot of the uh, the, the content creators to reach as many more audiences as possible to explain what Bar Citizen is, what its history is, and where it's going, and where it's going beyond the, the immediate future of, of this explosion of interest is, as I mentioned, we could have meetup groups in every city around the world, small ones, large ones, and the community is going to grow by millions over the next several years. And to already have this network in place of friends and communities and discords where people are talking to each other every day about things going on. I, when uh, the hurricane hit Houston a couple of years ago, everybody in the, in the Texas Houston bar citizen discord, they were all sharing information about emergencies and, and power and where to get water and supplies and things like that. It, they've become real local communities of people that have this in common, but also share your, your sense of local, uh, local place, which I think is really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think it's fantastic the way the, the community has grown. And obviously we're getting, as you said, m more and more thousands of uh, star citizen backers and people checking out the game uh, every month. And um, star citizen is starting to deliver more and more on their actual uh, vision. I mean, it's it's still a slow burn, uh, but we're going to have things for Squadron 42, hopefully at some point soon, maybe in our hands. Uh, we've got um, a load of exciting things happening this year with salvage and full persistence and um, uh, just a, a, a ton of other stuff with like the cargo refactor, potentially seeing a new star system at the end of the year if we're very lucky on sort of like an early test and server meshing, things like that. So big milestones this year that will only catapult star citizen to being more and more sort of on that stairway to being more mainstream as even more and more sort of content creators and, and people that haven't tried star citizen before tried out and stream it and talk about it um i just think it's it's a very exciting time for the star citizen community and bar citizens but do you think that it could be a problem if there's too many people turning up bar citizens that could spiral out of control could there be too much of a rush for them could there be t too much going on or maybe they get diluted because there's so many bar citizens or is one of the things that you do with the bar citizen.sc and and your organization help sort of prevent things getting too big or um, not too diluted yeah our, our biggest challenge is with scale of trying to find venues that you can have more than 30 to 40 people at 
Um, mm-hmm. if you, you look at those photos from the events last weekend, they had 100, 250 people in Frankfurt. They overflowed the original venue and had to take over a whole nother restaurant around the corner because they had so many people. There's not a lot of, not a lot of restaurants that can handle 200 plus people. <laughs> <laughs> and even a hundred is, is really straining things. So it, we're trying to help the organizers to see what type of venues are good. Uh, really found, especially with the explosion of, uh, of the, the microbreweries around the, around the world where they have pretty large open plan uh, areas with large tables. Most of them have food now and uh, indoor outdoor spaces. So they can host 20, 30 people very easily and then kind of scale up from there. Going beyond that, it, it, at a, at a hundred plus it's a, it's a real challenge. And we talked about this, uh, when we first started back in 2016, like eventually we're going to have regular meetups of a hundred plus people and it's going to be an entirely different scale. And the local organizers say, I can't do all this other than just share knowledge and, and uh, best practices between different groups. But the local organizers are going to have to find a place where they may have to rent a room, uh, sell tickets uh, to cover the costs of that. Cause a lot of times it could be a, a couple of hundred dollars an hour for, for some of these private rooms to be able to hold, uh, mm-hmm. to hold larger events. At least on the, on the plus side, the star citizen community tends to spend a, a decent amount when they go to these. So that they, they definitely are good traffic for the, for the, uh, for the venues as far as food and drink and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big challenge here over the next, uh, the next few years. And I'm really going to be leaning on some of the the guys that have done some of the larger events. Like we've had several people do really big events um, in various parts of the world. Uh, Paracon um, in, in Paris a couple of years ago before COVID, they had several hundred people there. They rented a, a uh, I think it was a, a museum. And it was really incredible turnout. They just had BECON in um, in Liege in Belgium. Uh, Commander Fran put that one on. Did a fantastic job. He had a whole small convention hall with uh, booths and vendors and uh, exhibitions. People from CAG came out. I think they had uh, had a couple hundred people at that one. One of the fir- one of the first ones I remember was I think in 2017 uh, in Germany. Uh, Con 42, I think they called it. And they they had a, conv- a small convention center, and they had five hundred people at that. Yes, it was. It was Con Forty Two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Samilla, Samilla from Switzerland was the organizer for that one. So, yeah, and and then there was there was the um, the ones in Austin. Um, I forget what they call those when the CitizenCon was in Europe. They had two in Austin, and that they had trouble getting enough people there, and. And that's definitely one of the challenges if you're if you have to put out as organizers several thousand dollars up front, then it, if you're trying to have a, a much bigger event and you don't get that, then and that can be really, um, really painful. Uh, and I know that it was for the uh, for the Austin folks. It's something we're going to be wrestling with, but I, I, it'll help that we're going to have a much larger, more active community and, and with CIG really supporting us. Hopefully that that continues. We, we, we know that uh, they tend to. Um, uh, be a little ADHD in their focus, kind of like me. <laughs> so if people want to learn or w- want to organize their own bar citizen or find out what other bar citizens are, they can just go to barcitizen.se. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah, there, there's a link to the bar citizen organizers uh, discord there. There's a map page where you can click uh, the, the discord uh, option and it'll show where all the regional discords are around the world. So as I said, we already have over 60. So if you're interested, see if there's already one there. There may be active ones going on. Even if you don't see an event scheduled on the map, they might have just had one or they might be in planning or they may not yet be planning one and you hop in and you can be the the, the fresh energy that says like, hey, let's get, get together next month and go talk about spaceships. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about or make us aware of? Uh, that That's really the primary thing. My biggest passion is, of course, um, but bar citizen bringing people together, uh, various communities like the jump club, bringing all the jump owners together there. And then from there, we stemmed off and created the yacht club, uh, around the, the show that we do every Wednesday, uh, reviewing the week's news and events. Uh, it's also become a really large, active, positive growing community. 
Uh, the ladies of Star Citizen uh, helped Miss Hearts found that. They've got over 150 folks in there for um, and our, our growing female um, part of the community to be able to have their own. Uh, another great group. So anywhere I can do to help lead people to their communities, that that's my passion. Really what you sort of done, you've brought everyone together and organized them and then been a figurehead for getting these things organized, and which has been um, absolutely fantastic for the community. Yeah, I am extremely good at forward momentum and energy. I, it's like for, for being old, and I, and I love joking about being one of the older citizens at uh, going on 52 here, I just am just an extremely energized, hyper kind of person. And um, the community energizes me. It's it, it's really what has driven me since 2016. When, uh, when, when I kind of started up the whole Bar Citizen movement, a little uh, background, I, I didn't actually join Star Citizen until September of 2015. And so I was kind of a late backer compared to a lot of the others. Mm -hmm. And um, just started like most do with a Aurora LN and then uh, eventually upgraded that to a Avenger Titan. And I fell in love with the uh, Origin 350R Right before the anniversary sale in 2015, I was renting it. This is a nice progression towards more and more expensive ships. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it's kind of that that typical uh, Star Citizen story over the years. You know, you, you, you start small, you buy a ship and like, oh, and when I, I fell in love with the 350R back then, and this was late 2015, 2.0 had just dropped. So we just got the Persistent Universe. I didn't know anything about Chris Roberts or the history of the project, although I had played Wing Commander when I was when I was young. And I saw these videos come over my feed on YouTube, and I'm not really a gamer that much as far as I, I don't consider myself a gamer. Um, like a lot of people, with, and they played hundreds and hundreds of games, and they've got thousands of games in their Steam library. Like, I haven't even really played many other MMO type games. I, I was mostly in Second Life since 2007. So I'm more of a immersive virtual universe kind of resident. And I was playing MechWarrior Online, which is really the first game I'd played with like other people. Oh, I love love MechWarrior Online. Fantastic game. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. I played it really hardcore for about three years, but I didn't get to know anybody. I just like dropped in, dropped out, mm -hmm. and never developed those online uh, uh, interactions like a lot of other people in the community have had with so many other games like Ultima Online and World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft a little bit, but really mostly solo. And so I, I didn't have a lot of these community experiences. And I'm a very social person, but I, I got married in 1998 and left Dallas and left all my friends behind. And my wife wasn't social. And so I didn't have any friends for like, 15, 16 years, except for in Second Life. And so when Star Citizen came around, I was a a hermit, kind of a hermit gamer. I just played by myself and got in. I was flying my ship around. So the progression there was I, I got that 350R, fell in love with it, and it came on sale at the anniversary sale. And I put my credit card over the limit to buy the thing. Like, holy crap, it's like $125. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as far as yeah. a one-time game purchase as you know most new backers think it's like who's spent a hundred dollars on something and i'd probably spent thousands of dollars in second life over the years in little small incremental purchases and renting land and buying clothes and things like that yeah, it's the but, difference between micro purchases and macro purchases isn't it <laughs> exactly and people don't and and very rarely if ever do other games ever show you your running total of how much you've spent. Yeah, that's true. People who played World of Warcraft for 10 years, play, paying $15 a month, like, what does that add up to? <laughs> so that's that's an interesting thing. So I'm, um, I've, I've spent a few thousand dollars on the project now, um, uh, but I sort of justify it as almost, a, it's a work expense for me, effectively. I'm like, yeah. I play Star Citizen, kind of as a job, at least I cover Star Citizen news uh, and do summaries as a job. But I'm very much in the sort of thoughts of, well, I, I want to get most stuff in game and I want to encourage people to get most stuff in game. And the monetization practices of Star Citizen can be seen in two different ways from, from Joe Public. And you can see them in that, is it sort of very expensive and predatory practices or is it people wanting to put money 
into a game, help support that game that could get those ships in in other ways by just playing the game. There's no, it's not gated, those ships. You can get them from playing the game and, and even now. Um, and I think that really, realistically, there is a little bit of marketing there that is pushing you to try and buy the stuff. I wouldn't say it's too aggressively predatory, but it is trying to make you buy things. Yeah, I, you know, I... I... I always take exception to at, at being in sales my whole life. Mm-hmm. I, I take ex- exception to uh, referring to any marketing as predatory. Is okay. CIG being a business that they, they have nearly 800 employees, they have to pay every paycheck every month all year, and their running expenses right now are about 80 million dollars a year, and they're basically slightly better than breaking even. And there were several years there where they were running in the red. So everybody points at this half a billion dollars that they've that they've brought in, but all that's been spent on the development. Five studios, eight hundred employees, growing that's out hundred employees a year. So that they they have to maintain a steady income for cash flow. And uh, and running a small business my, myself, I, it is a huge pressure when you have big bills every month that you've got to pay like we have we've got to keep the money coming in and frankly i i think their business model is is not really that great as as a business as everybody says like oh they're making so much money off of spaceship sales but it's very uneven like they have a big jump at invictus they have a big jump at the anniversary sale and then they then they're way down during during the rest of the year I, overall they're still making air quotes record income but their expenses are right in line with them. But what I would say is that their business plan or their funding model is perfect for the development of the game. I, I would agree. Yeah, because the, it, it works. It's sort of like, yeah, they are spending almost all of the money on the game's development, if not all of the money on the game's development. You can argue that there are now some shareholders and that sort of stuff as well. But it's, um, yeah, I think that's an important thing that almost all of that money is being spent on the game's development. And it's a very different thing from um, maybe uh, games that are doing... Uh, just for profit, just building something for profit and trying to pump out more and more content for profit, where Star Citizen is trying to build a game. You wouldn't have Star Citizen if they didn't have the funding model that they'd have. At least you wouldn't have it in this sort of scope Yep. Um, and the way it's expanded. Yep. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me today, Joran. It's very appreciated for enlightening me on the Bar Citizens and the work you've done to sort of help, help them spring up everywhere. Um, hopefully we'll have many more fantastic ones in the years to come. So... Obviously, we've talked about StarCitizen.sc. Uh, where else can people find you? You talked about the Yacht Club. What, what's the address for that? Where can they find you? Yeah, I, I am Joran SC on Twitter. Uh, the Yacht Club is on Twitch on Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern time at Yacht Club BC or Bar Citizen. We're essentially a weekly virtual hangout Bar Citizen type of event uh, where we just talk about things and hang out with the community. And I think Star Citizen Joran on YouTube. I make a, occasional content. Eventually, gonna try to do more there. But Bar Citizen is con- consuming me. Well, thanks for that. Much appreciated. You take care. And, thanks for uh, you too. In the verse. Appreciate it. And no worries, mate. Hello, it's me, the Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year, and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and NordVPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle, and so can you, by using the links below to get great deals and better internet accessibility, security, and encryption of I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer! That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was board gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually, now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the queen. Try to get her, but she was too busy. She says got like a busy weekend or something. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing-styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top 
to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with a thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June. Please take care, and I'll see you in the verse.